Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live at Five. It's Thursday, November 7th, opening night of yeah. Tina, Woo! the Tina Turner musical. Congratulations, Adrian Warren and yes. everyone over at the Lenfontaine. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello, everybody. And a fantastic Tony <gasps> yes. and Grammy Award winner, Mr. Leslie Odom Jr. Woo! That's right. He has right. a new album coming out tomorrow right. called Come Mr. On. I've heard a lot of it. It's fantastic. You guys are going to love it. We're so excited he's here. We're going to talk all about it. But first, today's top five. We are counting down the minutes until we see, can see this cast in action. That's right. We are talking about Tracy Letts' Pulitzer <laughs> finalist play, The Minutes. And he will be leading the Broadway cast when they begin previews on February 25th of 2020. It will officially open on March 15th. It is going to be playing the Court Theater. <clears throat> You okay? Excuse me. <laughs> um. He's super excited. So I'm very Big excited fans. about the minutes now. Um, joining Tracy Letts in the play will be Jesse Mueller and Arnie uh, Hammer. Non singing <laughs> debut non for Jesse singing Mueller. Non singing debut for Jesse Mueller. Very exciting. This will be directed by Anna D. Shapiro. But that's not, those aren't the only people doing the play. We also have Blair Brown, Tony winner, of course, K. Todd Friedman, Austin Pendleton, Cliff Chamberlain, Danny McCarthy, and Jeff still will all be joining the cast it is described as a comedy and the minutes refracts the current state of america and our politics through a town meeting in the small fictional town of big cherry i think i have an almond stuck in my throat is what, so i apologize i'm not worked up over about the minutes but i'm very excited for the minutes it's to be so, crying over yeah, the it's minutes be phenomenal yeah yes and this is going to be a star packed reading and one night only event so the importance of being earnest, of course, is a, a very uh, fancy Oscar Wilde play. Everybody loves it. And they're doing this big benefit for Roundabout. And uh, we knew Angela Lansbury was doing it, which is yes. why people are paying big bucks to go to this mm -hmm. benefit for so Roundabout. Right. But now we know it's not just about Angela Lansbury. Annalie Ashford, Jane Howdy Shell, John Glover, Ooh. Daniel Davis, Simon Jones, Tom Rhodes. It's a great, great uh, cast. And real-life couple, Hamish Linklater and Lily Rabe. Yes. We've just been talking we about American just, Horror Story 1984. Yeah. Lily mm -hmm. Rabe has a nice little role she does. Uh, in that, yeah. as she often does. She and saved the season for me. You know yeah. what? <laughs> you know what? You're right. The minute she showed up, the season took a turn <laughs> for the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're a real couple, and they're playing the onstage couple, John and Gwendolyn. Anyway, um, it's going to be amazing. John Wilson's directing it. It's at the American Airlines Theater November 18th at 7.30 p.m. So if you um, have a lot of money, go see it. Yeah. <laughs> And the audience at last night's The Death of the sal Salesman in the West End had an one night only experience. Um, yes. What's hopefully. with these theaters? So, over uh, in the West yes. End? So, uh, the London, London's Piccadilly Theater, a uh, portion of the ceiling collapsed last night um, on, during, people. on people during a performance of Death of a Salesman. Um, so, paramedics were called to the venue. I believe five members of the audience were, uh, they sustained minor injuries See? and they were taken to local hospitals. They're all fine. They're fine. Um, they are fine. Uh, so, this is uh, co directed by Marianne Elliott and Miranda Cromwell. The last time something like this happened was in 2013 oh when God, a part of the Marianne Apollo Elliot. Theater, and it was Marianne Elliott's The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Um, so, the, you know, I don't know, like these, these ceilings shattering director. productions. You're saying the ceilings can't handle yeah, all, like the all of this. Shattering yes. glass ceilings and breaking the ceilings. Yep, either. absolutely. This production co-stars Sharon D. Clark as I'm Linda really, Lohman. I want to see this production. Me too. Um, so it officially opened on November 4th, not that long ago before this happened. So there are going to be three scratch performances at the Young Vic which is where this production transferred from, and it's going to be happening on Friday, and there are two performances on Saturday. The next show that is headed to the Piccadilly Theater is Pretty Woman, the musical, that begins on Valentine's Day of next year. Ooh. So hopefully everything will be repaired and will be fine <laughs> and take care of these old theaters in London. But yeah, mm -hmm. I hope everyone's all right. And we got to save the date for this year's Obie Awards. This is this is kind of news. Next May 18th, uh, the Obie Awards are happening. <laughs> 2020. Yay. It's really <laughs> far away. Yeah, and they will honor the best of off and off, off and off, 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 off Broadway theater. It will be at New York City's Terminal 5. And um, there's not much more to say. Just yeah. if you, you produce something off Broadway, maybe you'll yeah, win an Obie on Obi. May 18th, 2020. Absolutely. You have time. Get it together. <laughs> Write the show. Cast get it. Get it up. Get it up. Yeah. 
<laughs> and one of our stage faves is heading back to the small screen. Yeah, anytime we can talk about Michael Park around here, we do so. <laughs> so uh, he will be returning to the small screen in Netflix's new romantic comedy series, Dash and Lily. It is based off of the young adult book by David Levithan and Rachel Cohn. I have read this book. It's really cute. Um, it's stories on a cynical Dash, that is the boy, and an optimistic Lily. Uh, that's Midori Francis, who was in last year's Usual Girls off-Broadway at Roundabout's Underground. Uh, mm -hmm. She will be playing Lily. Um, and yeah, they kind of, they find out they have more in common than they initially thought. Michael Park will be playing Gordon, who is Dash's dad. I'm sure it's going to be very adorable. It is produced in part by Nick Jonas, which is why I think Michael Park is involved. They have a cute little bromance. <laughs> um, but yeah, more info about this being on Netflix. Eight episodes. We will find out very soon. So, so you know, Michael Park is on a lot of Netflix shows. It's he almost is. Like he was also in Stranger Things this there's past a, there's season. There's a bunch of things, and it's almost like it's like an old Hollywood system. Did they like sign him up? Yeah, for he's like just deal? a Netflix. I don't like, know. Yeah, I'm no, not complaining. Yeah. No, absolutely anytime. We, we like streaming yeah. you, Michael. Um, also on the site, you can check out the next episode of Jagged Little Thrill that is backstage at Jagged yes. Little Pill with Catherine Gallagher. This is episode two. It's a lot of fun. She's a wonderful vlogger. Awesome. So make sure you do that as well. You know but. who knows a lot about wonderful vlogging? Mr. Leslie Odom he Jr. He certainly does. Thank you, yes, Ryan. Go get yourself pleasure. a drink of water. <laughs> Caitlin, <laughs> tell everyone about today's guest. Gladly. Yes, we got Mr. Leslie Odom Jr. here with us today to talk all about his new album, Mr., which has Paul mentioned is fully out, released tomorrow, and he has been hyping it up all week long, and we're so excited to have him here to talk all about it. You may know that he won a Tony for a really small show called Hamilton. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> he also took us backstage when he was vlogging for us. He's been all over the screen. He was in Murder on the Orient Express. He's been he's in the newly released Harriet, and we are so excited to talk to him all about his busy, busy life. Make sure you follow him on social media at Leslie Odom Jr. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And everyone, please welcome Leslie and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. Hey. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. I love the hot pink. You look Thank so you. good yes. on the set. It, you know, me and David Corns go back. So I, <laughs> you do. We, we have, he designed Patty Hamilton, <laughs> yes. He gave, he gave you a nice stage to win your Tony on, to yes. give that Tony winning performance. That's right. And do, and they give, do they give out Emmys or Tonys for like best guest at, guest at five? Oh, you you vying for one of those? Yeah, okay, yeah. Live okay, five. Live okay, five. Yeah. okay. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Best pink shirt. You still, you still have room for more trophies? <laughs> yeah, okay, I got, I got all the room. I got all the room. Well, you have a lot of this energy guy, too. This guy said today, um, on one of my interviews, he said, "You know, you're a talented guy. Maybe one day you'll peacock." What's a peacock? What? Pe what? That's what he thought an e got was. Oh. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll peacock. I thought it was the Maybe best thing I heard. <laughs> Maybe That's I will. You know what? I hope you do peacock. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wish that for you. <laughs> Uh, okay, you have a new album. Yeah. That, that's you, you always have so many things to talk about, but that's the that's the number one thing right now because it number comes one. out tomorrow. That's right. Is, uh, how do you feel on the tonight evening? at midnight? Actually. Tonight at midnight. Tonight at midnight. And, and so that's in under seven hours. Um, how do you feel when you're on the the verge of something like that, a release of an album? Um, whenever I whenever like I realize how close it is, I get a little like I get butterflies a little bit, like yeah. it's opening night or something. It's crazy. Um, I feel so. I feel so great. It's my first original album. Yeah. Was, I've, I didn't sit at this table for the jazz album. Didn't sit here for the Christmas album. Um, I wasn't invited, but oh, I, you know, but oh, you Mr. You're always invited. You're always you, invited. you just knock on the door. Knock but, on the door. But yeah, the the original album is is something totally different. Yeah. You know, it's it's, my, it's the first time ever. My first time ever singing um, words and melodies that are, that are my own. A lot of these songs started as journal entries, and oh, so it's interesting. deeply personal. And I've been working on it for quite a long time, so I'm I'm really excited for people to hear it. So some of this music even maybe predates your other. I mean, your 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 first album was mostly like jazz covers and yeah. Christmas standards, although. Beautiful albums. I Thank love you. all of them. But this is different. This is different. Um, it, no, it doesn't quite predate it. I mean, you know, I my first album was a Kickstarter record. You yeah. know, I, I raised after Smash. That uh -huh. was like sort of what I what I did with that. With any cachet that I had, I like yeah. went to people and asked them to support. So so thank you, anybody out there thank that you supported it. I mean, you know, because I wouldn't honestly I wouldn't be here without it. Um so that record, um, I just wanted to learn, you know, how to make a record, and then the Christmas album was just a, you know, I wanted to make a really good Christmas album, and then people started asking me what I was going to do next. And before I'd written a single song, I was telling people that I was going to make an original album. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know, I don't know where that came from, mm -hmm. but I decided to make good on it, and, and here we are. It took um, 
the, a couple of traumatic writing sessions. Um, but, you know, we found our way, found a, a process that worked for me. and You found a good team to make yeah, it with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who would you guys know? Um, Rafael Casal mm -hmm. was my main collaborator. He was my, well, my, my first um, collaborator, and he sort of stayed the longest. Um, he really helped me sort of um, hone in on a sound mm -hmm. and, um, you know, a, a, a Yes, a sound that we that we felt confident enough and comfortable enough to invite other writers in. Once we had like two handfuls of songs, it, right. we were like, okay, okay, so this is what we want to do, you guys. Can you help us make more mm, of these? Mm -hmm. And and people were willing. And how do you describe the sound? I, I just mm. like it. I mean, mm. I, I was actually I said to Caitlin before you came in. I said I don't I don't know how Leslie would describe it genre wise. I I just I just like living in it. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad my my favorite album. When I think about my favorite albums, I love that you said "Living in It." I remember the Amy Winehouse album. Uh -huh, I yeah. felt like I felt like I wanted to move into that record, <laughs> exactly, and like and just and just luxuriate yes. in it, just like yeah. s just lounge in it, yes. hang around in it, you know, as long as That's I. That's the vibe I was getting from you. I appreciate it. Um, well, we when we our sort of thesis was like. You know, we wanted to make the kind of music that Nat King Cole might make today. Mm, I like that. We wanted to make big band music for the year 3000. Mm. You know, just really try. We really want to make a contemporary record that stands on the shoulders of tradition, mm -hmm. of the jazz tradition, of the crooner tradition. And so that's what started us on our way. And then we ended up with what we ended up with. But that's what we were trying to do, make a, make a, a classic contemporary record. Yeah, I like that. that, that yeah. Let's keep going down that path. Yeah, thanks. I want more. Okay. <laughs> you got it. So why'd you call it Mr.? Just a, a nice catchy, I like MR. <laughs> MR, Mr., what? No, I mean, it has, it has meaning for me. It has personal meaning mm -hmm. for me um, that one day I'll probably talk about. But I'll say this, if you can allow me, if you will allow me to be a little squirrely for a second. Like, you know. As an artist, you work on these things for however long you work on them. You know, you sit with them alone for a while. And the the, the best thing about this stuff, I, I think art, the great art is created on a conscious and subconscious level. Mm. And the audience can tell you things about the work that you didn't even know was there. People can right. people can tell you so so you know, the minute an artist is like standing on some soapbox, oh, this is what I meant by mm -hmm. that, it's like it just stops people's imaginations from working yep. so I'm so curious to hear what people think and what what they think mr. means mm -hmm. when they hear it okay I like that no, you're right. I bet you're right you don't want to just lay it out for everybody yeah, yeah. let them get into it yeah so we miss you on Broadway sir Thank um, you. are you gonna come back ever what are you doing yeah I'd come back yeah. I, I would come back yeah there's um yeah. I mean, Broadway treated you really good last time. It's not like, you know, I mean, what, oh. you know, leap of faith, maybe I could see you not immediately coming back. But it was 21 shows where, you know, that was pretty good, too. Um, no, I would come back. I'd come back in a, in a heartbeat. Okay, cool. In a New York Minute. Okay, Ooh. New York Minute. Yeah, Nicolette's going to do, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. you know, maybe she you know, the, la the last thought. time, the last time we were here was for her show, yep. which I... You know, that started as a talent crush. So I was so excited to see her in Waitress yeah. eight shows a week. And I almost went eight shows a week. Like I almost went as <laughs> often as it. Nicolette went. Yeah, because I just <laughs> I just think she's just such a special performer. She's so honest yeah, she and is. gorgeous. She's like so courageous on stage yeah. to tell her truth. But she's gonna do Suffragettes with um the new Shana Taub uh workshop. It's just a workshop Fantastic. that the public is producing. And it's her and Pip. And Pippa Bonnie Sarah. and Jen Calella and Fantastic. stuff. So maybe the Odom family will get back to Broadway through her this time, which I'm thrilled about. And how's little Lucille? She's Your good. Daughter, Thank you yeah. for asking. Yes. Yeah, what's, she, what's she into? Um, she playing telling us music? no. <laughs> <laughs> telling, us, telling us absolutely not. She um, Lucy is on the record. She's got a little. She's got a cameo on the record. Nice. Um, there was a song that she loved. Um, from the beginning, I'll save a little, it's a little Easter egg for you guys, but there was a song that Lucy loved right from the demos, okay. like that she was like, I want to hear she that reacted. song again. Okay. And so Nicolette had taken a little video of us like hanging out in the bedroom one day and I included the audio from that video on the song. I love it. So Lucy loved was it. Was she expensive? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Very. <laughs> 
you oh, also, I, I mean, I have to acknowledge you're in Harriet, and it, it's yeah. a big hit. It's with, well. with Cynthia Riva. had an amazing opening weekend, which is, you know, it's a small movie, and it, it, yeah. it made like, four, I think it's up to $14, $15 million, which yeah. is fantastic. It exceeded expectations. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's great for my friend Cynthia, who's, I think, exceptional in, in the work, and it's yeah. great for Harriet. Mm -hmm. It's great for stories about black life, mm -hmm. which... Um, you know, there's, there's, we, we got a lot of catching up to do. This is the very first Harriet Tubman movie that's ever, major yeah, motion that's picture crazy. that's ever been made. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of catching up to do with, with stories about black life. And I just feel very lucky to have been invited to this party mm -hmm. by my, by Cynthia. You know, Cynthia was the one who said, I want you to do this. And wow. Wow. It's like, okay. Amazing. Yeah. She, she had room for not just one Tony winner on that cast. She's like, bring more. That's right. <laughs> Maybe she, in here. she wants me to peacock, and I'm just <laughs> really... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you also could have, I don't know if the, maybe somewhere in one of the feathers of the peacock is a blogging award because you were a fantastic Broadway.com oh, blogger. That was so fun. We thank you for that. That was so Aaron fun. Aaron Burr, sir, look it up on YouTube. It's so good. I had a ball <laughs> doing that. I didn't know that I would, but I, I really You captured enjoyed. so many great moments. <laughs> it was so fun. So funny. Like I remember, like and then I would like do like the little talk show thing yeah. at the end. Yeah. I took it very seriously. Yeah. Thank you to my cast for putting up with that. My God, I like <laughs> always had a silly camera in their faces. But it. yeah, I, I was, I was, I'm really happy to have that too. It's like a little scrapbook of the experience right. too. That, that's really what fun. I love about it. you know 20 years from now we could look yeah. back on those episodes. It's a little piece of history. Yeah. Can you imagine if we had like a, a Ethel Merman vlog backstage at Gypsy? Living on. Oh my God. <laughs> Who's, you, you gotta get Patty to vlog for company. <laughs> okay, you, you're gonna ask her for me? You're gonna, are you gonna convince her? Are you gonna get Patty to do that for me? What? <laughs> Call her up. Mommy. I'm into it. I'm into it, Patty. Me, uh, hey, Caitlin, what yes. are the people online uh, asking Mr. Yes, definitely. So, Laurie's <laughs> question is you mentioned having butterflies leading up to this moment, but how does it feel just knowing that you've been working on this for so long and people actually able to like listen to it? entirety on their own like freely at midnight at midnight it feels it feels amazing um just know that i um you know never take your time or your support for mm. granted i uh worked very very hard and tirelessly uh over this and i um in hopes that you would hear it and love it but at the very least hear it even if you don't love it you know you can let me know that too i'm good with that you know, I'm good with it. You no, know, I'm good with an honest critique of the work, but um, but I hope you'll listen. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, it feels so. It feels amazing. You're also yes. going on tour. You have a, a whole bunch. You're doing a few things before the end of the year, but then you're uh, our first you're chunk Baby, of next year. You're baby's first all tour over the bus. Place. I've never, <laughs> I've never been on a tour bus. We Nicolette and I went to see Sarah Bareilles on her gorgeous tour. Right yeah. now, if she's anywhere near you, go see her. Um, it really was beautiful. We went in San, to, to see her in San Diego, and because um, because I'm putting this tour together, I know I'm not going to have Sarah Bareilles money, but I wanted to see. <laughs> you know, I just yeah. really I'm taking in the work in a different way and yeah. these tours in a different way. But you know, I was telling her how excited I was about the bus. I've never been on a bus, <laughs> and she was like. Wait five minutes. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> Get me off. Yeah. Are you, are you excited about the bus? Oh, okay. So it's really one bus, the whole thing. Like you, yeah. Because this is like people say they're on tour sometimes, but there's like weeks between. You're actually just going through. We're doing them. They're almost back to back. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. If you well, want to vlog on your tour, just like bet. <laughs> that would be. I would love that. I don't know. It could be fun. I would love A that. A repeat vlog. Yeah. Uh, we went to see Ramos on his. He was, you know, yeah. he was in Williamsburg mm -hmm. last night. Was that last night? It was even last night or the uh, night before. I think it was last night. Oh my God. <laughs> um, it was exceptional. Yeah. That's another beautiful record. Yeah. I think he made a yeah. classic. It's so, so good. Yeah. David's last album is fantastic. It came out like three weeks ago, his last clipping album. Yeah. I also think that that's, I don't think that that's an accident that our, that me, David, and Anthony have mm. al original albums all releasing like a month within each other. Mm. I think... Like number one, we're sort of super cosmically connected because we spent so much time together with that show. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's something about like the timing that it took between leaving the stage, sobering up, mm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like deciding what you wanted to want to do next, building that thing. Like you know, what I mean? it's strange. Was it, was it hard to process all the attention and all the yeah. like? You had a lot of opportunities before you, you know, and. You started doing a lot of movies, big movies, and wrote a book and making music. And it is because you have to because there was there was then there's still a 
plenty, there's still yeah. a fair amount, but there was, especially then coming off the stage, there was quite a bit of attention yeah. on us all. And you do, you have to be careful because before, you know, it's your life you're spending. Mm. You know, you don't get these years back and you can spend, you can easily spend a decade chasing somebody else's dream, doing the things that everybody wants you to do mm. instead of ever taking a second you know, Lucy, Lucy being born was that for me. Mm. Meaning, you know, because I took a paternity leave and stuff, yeah. I really got to stop and go, what do I want to do? Mm. What do I want to do? Because, because if not, you will, you know, people will throw things at you and like, whether you like it or not, right. you're kind of flattered mm. by the, by that they sure. want you to do it and they're throwing certain kind of money at you and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can, you can easily like let your life pass you by. So I'm, I'm grateful that I took the time to figure this out. I think you're making good decisions. Thanks, Paul. Um, uh, speaking of Anthony Ramos, by the yeah. way, he's going to be in that In the Heights movie, which I'm so excited about. Can't wait. Can't is wait. there any, um, now that you're getting so good on film, is there any uh, musical you'd like to make a movie of? Yeah, the one that I, the one that I really want to do, the rights are all tied up, so I'll say it because, you know, it's probably never going to happen anyway. So either I'll, you know, the, the, the only sort of older one that I'd want to do is, is Pearly. Ooh, as a movie. I'd do Pearly as anything, man. I'd come back to Pearly tomorrow. Okay. All right. You'd okay. come back to Broadway and Pearly tomorrow. I, I love that show, and I think, like... you got some tour dates coming up. You might have to cancel a lot of concerts. <laughs> Let's go. Pearly back to do tomorrow. Pearly. I want to do Pearly you at Encore. Maybe <laughs> next summer. At Encore. Yeah. But, um, but no, I, I really love that show, and I think it's, you know, I certainly think the message is timely mm -hmm. in it, So, but i do it in any way. But... Um, if not that, you know, we'll we'll make something. We'll make something yeah. original and I I don't yeah. I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz anything you do, it's create things. Let's go. Yeah. I love that. You're a creator. Yeah. I love that. Thanks, uh man. I'm so happy you're doing well. It's always good to see you. Please say hi to the family. I will. Everyone, get Mr. It's out at midnight tonight and uh go see Harriet and you're in a bunch of other things coming up too. This yeah. guy's going to be in a lot of places including maybe a town near you singing. Next That's year. right. Awesome. Thank you, Leslie. Thank hey, you. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Talk to Conrad Rickamore all about soft power.